All right. Um, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you very much morning, for having sir. me this morning. Um, I want to believe everyone can hear me clearly. Just to confirm that. Can you all hear me clearly? Yes, I can. Yes, we can. All right. Uh, thank you very much. So, thank you for having me, Saifa. It's always a pleasure to be here. And uh, good morning, everyone, once again. Thank you for coming to class. <laughs> So my name is Victor Falabi. Um, this morning I'll be thinking us on grant writing and accessing funds. Grant writing and accessing funds. I I run a few businesses, a workspace, a content creation, filming and um, talent management agency also, and. Um, I've been privileged to win quite a number of grants over the years. In the last 10 years, I've been doing business. So I believe uh, I'll be able to share some helpful info. Information and knowledge this morning that so funds for their business. So like the topic said, um, can we all see my screen, please? Um, can anyone see the screen? I'm displaying something right now to be sure we can see. Yes, please. Okay, great. So uh, we'll be going through some of these outlines this morning. Right. So before we get started, I would like to start with this. Try the network is so bad. you can see my screen. Breaking. My or yours? Well, I'll show which one. Is it the same for everyone? Is the network breaking? Yeah. Not to be no, sure it's from my hand. The network is clear. Please go on, sir. Oh, okay, great. So I want to start with this uh, icebreaker. And I will need like two or three persons to please respond to this. So would you like to have a hundred percent of the business value that on thousand dollars or 10 percent like two or three percent respond i want to know what you will decide yes let's let's have it let's have it was speaking to me you can also use the comment session anyway so that um hey, good morning sir good morning everyone uh personally yes, i would uh, yeah. do 10 percent of a business valued at uh million dollars rather than a hundred percent to a business value that uh, hundred thousand uh, and why would that be okay because um uh, it the exist you're just saying that says it's better to own like uh five percent of coca-cola for instance that's uh, own hundred percent of your business because there's the, uh, the systems are uh, already put in place. Uh, we have protocols. We have you know all that you need to run a very successful business as in put put in place. Probably outsource your accounting team. It's all, everything is in place. So you are almost too sure that you know things are working. Other other than trying to you know go go through it all by yourself and just bear the brunt, take the risks, and at the end of the day, you might end up failing. So that's my take on it. Okay, thank you very much. So um, you are more about the security of your, you know, investment or business now. That's that's yeah. good. That's good. Any other person with some other reason or opposing view? It's important we start with this just to um, understand what we're about to discuss much better. So I would like another person to please uh, voice their opinion. So anyone else, please. Um, I know women are very confident, so I'm hoping to hear more people speak, actually. Okay. 
not sure many people can hear me or some people are not. They just we can hear you. We can hear you. Okay, yeah. So, like, if you can see my screen, you can hear me. So, I would like to hear your opinion about what's on the screen. Well, just as um the first speaker has rightly said, you know, having um ten thousand ten percent of your business valued at um one million dollars is a whole lot, you know, compared with um valuing your hundred percent at um hundred thousand dollars. I mean, <laughs> the the ratio is 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 a lot, you know. When we want to look at the percentage, we'll say, okay, this one is 100%, this one is 10%, but that 10% is actually much more than the 100%. So having a smaller share in a very big organization is better than having the all of 100% that is just a fraction, you know, that, we, that might not even stand the test of time. You understand? So... I believe that only ten percent of a business that was that one million. Sorry, the business value that one million dollars was sometimes ago a hundred thousand dollars. It has grown, so let's okay. grow it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. So, from the two people that have spoken, it's obvious women are for the security investment. Ah, okay. Um, but usually I know that business people are, they love taking risk also, right? So is there another person, just somebody with an opposing view? I would really like to hear someone with an opposing view. Everybody's taking 10% of a million dollars. All right, I guess um, nobody's speaking again. And I have quite a number of persons in this class. Is Okwayemi Yusuf here? If you are here, please unmute and try to respond to this. Okay. Uh, what of... Um, I'm just going randomly over the names I'm calling out. Um, Bisola or Tsunla, right? I believe I'm right. If you, are, if you can hear me, just unmute and please respond to this. Okay, so I think I have just two persons in the class <laughs> as far as I can say. Okay, good morning. Good morning. This is a family. Yeah, so. thank you so much. Yeah, go on. Okay, I'll, I'll rather go for the 10% of the business valued uh, $1 million. And looking at the equivalent, a 10% of um a 10 percent of one million one million dollars is still equivalent to like uh, the hundred sorry to the hundred thousand dollars. And looking at that, not looking at that or the other side, we have to look in at the key in the yeah. security of the of so, the business. Okay. We have to keep the security of the business as well, not putting whole egg in a basket. And with the 10%, you can actually still be going and still be doing well. The 100%, by the time we put in the all of the 100%, uh, without without checking out for rigs, without rigs assessing and every other thing, it could actually, it might actually backfire. And at the end of the day, uh, the business may end up uh, flopping and uh, you won't get what you uh, and we won't be able to get the actual goal of the business. Okay, thank you so much. So um, you made a lot of assumption that um, the ten percent of a million dollars is safe totally, uh, like it's an investment that cannot fail. That's like how everybody that has spoken um, spoke. They spoke like it's not. It cannot fail because at least it has grown. It has a more um, bigger space okay peculiar you're raising your hand if you want to speak please unmute i'm willing to listen she here okay probably she did that by mistake all right so um i can see and i don't know if you want to speak if you want to speak just on mute let me go on now there is no right or wrong answers to this particular one 
obviously most of us are towards the 10% of the business value that a million dollars because of the security, perceived security value of um, that business. It's not because your share is, or your the share that you have is, this is actually the same thing as the 100% of a $100,000 business. It's just that you are very particular about having a secured investment in the business. Um, the other way around is um, in Hello, the 10%, sorry. You are not guaranteed. Okay. You want to say something? Uh, so, sorry, I have to cut in. It's okay. now that the, the sound is getting clearer. So I, I have not been hearing. I, I, I chatted. I placed it on the chat that the sound is breaking a lot. So I have the hundred million dollar. I was just hearing hundred million dollar, ten percent, hundred percent. I'm not following, please. Before you go too far. Okay. Okay. So I'm sure you can see my screen now, right? Yes, I can see the screen. It's just the sound that is breaking, but it's clearer great. now. It's better now. Oh, great, great. So, can you make uh, a choice among these two and tell me why? Between the ten percent and the hundred percent. Yes. I don't understand it. Is is that um, if I'm apply if if I have a, a choice to. Yes, option you have to a choice choose to make a business of hundred thousand dollars, but you have hundred percent of it, or a million dollars, but you have just ten percent. Which would you go for? Hello, hello. I I, I still don't understand it. <laughs> okay, don't worry. I'll make this as we go, and you get the. Understand it better. Okay, thank you very much. So, the for those that are going for the ten percent of a million dollars business, are particular about the security of their investment and the future. Being that a one million dollars business with ten percent as other shareholders, so the risk, the everything is being shared. You don't have so much risk as someone that has a hundred thousand dollar business but as 100% of it. So the risk is shared by just one person. However, this can grow and the 100% owner can also sell shares eventually uh, if the risk and other business things were properly done. The business can actually grow. Also, the 10% of $1 million is also a good idea because it's safer, you have more. Can you please everybody? Uh -huh. Everyone. Okay, thank you very much. So um this was just a nice break. It's not necessarily a right or wrong answer. It is a matter of choice. In a hundred percent business, you have the chance to direct the to give the business the direction it should go. But in a ten percent, uh, the business will have lost its uniqueness, and because of the many influences of other shareholders, a lot of things will have changed. So there are times where people prefer to keep their businesses small so that they can maintain the purpose why they started the business, and there are times where people prefer to sell almost all the shares so that they can get more money and expand their horizon. So it all depends on what you want. So as we go on in this class, I want to always know this in your mind. It's about what you want. If it is just the money you want, yes, fine. It's about building a particular legacy. What is the exact thing that you hope to achieve as a business owner, as you plan to look for funds? All right, so let me go on. Understanding grant application process. So these are like the five basic processes you go through in any grant or um, proposal that you're trying to put in form. The first one is to research available grants. So I believe everyone on this call is a tech savvy to an extent, at least you know how to go online and search for information. So I expect you on a daily basis to up on your phone or to get on your phone searching for information online. 
things like okay, uh, latest grants for this business, what opportunities exist, what is the government doing in your industry? If I ask you now that okay, what industry are you? What is the latest that the Nigerian government since you? I believe most people here are currently in Nigeria. Since you're in Nigeria, what exact thing is the government doing in your industry? You should be able to come up with very reasonable and current information. You know, this will show how versatile you have and how ready you have to get funding. The next one is to understand their requirements. You prepare and review the proposals you're submitting. Then you actually submit it and every other documentation, then you review the process. All right. So these are some of the websites I explore from time to time. Uh, I'm sure, or let me assume that some of us know some of these websites. Um, let me see. I want to share my screen now. I want to show us um, a particular website now. Uh, should be this one. Okay, this one. Okay, so can we see this? Can we see my screen, please? It's important we go along. We can, we can see your screen. So this is like, yes. thank you. Thank you so much. This is one of the websites. This is specifically made for women. And right now, it's like it's best the best gender to be the woman. So... Because there's so much, so much out there. And I'm I know you go, you ladies are aware there's so much out there for women. So this is one of the websites you could explore. They, they always have this grand cycle. Uh, let me see, there's anyone going on right now. Okay, so this is a call for applications leading from the south. Okay, this is uh Nigerians may not be able to apply for this. Um Okay. All right. So this is the current one they have. Uh, if you read through, you might see then I don't know if everyone on this call is a Nigerian. If everyone on this call is a Nigerian, um okay, you may not be able to apply for this particular, yes. but you keep checking from time to time. Uh they usually have like different grants at different times that is specifically for women. All right. So, um, yeah, so there are other websites that you could just explore from time to time and um, have uh, the best of it. Okay, so I, I was showing you now some of the websites that I personally use. So, opportunities for Africa, opportunities for Nigerians, um, and the likes. Okay, so you may take down some of these websites if you want, but I'm sure once you just go online, you can access any one of it. Just type um, grants for Nigerian, grants for Africa, and the like. All right, thank you. The next slide I'm talking about. Um, Understanding the process itself. <laughs> Understanding the process itself. So, the first thing is you have to review the guidelines before applying for any grant. Many people apply for grants without reading. There is a reason why the requirements. Not on Sorry, no. somebody's mic is making noise. If you could please. Move. Okay, thank you. So you have to review the guidelines. There's a reason why the organizers wrote the guidelines there. So please, before you apply for a grant, you carefully review the guidelines, eligibility criteria, the deadlines, the required documentations, the budget guidelines, and the evaluation criteria. So um, many times, you know, because applications have like a period, maybe two weeks, three weeks, one month. So people start an application and probably zoom off thinking that it will be there forever. And they come back after a while, they realize the application is closed. So either you set yourself a reminder or you keep checking, or you just, you can sit down at a point in time and just finish up an application at a sitting. You know, 
except it needs you to get some other document documentation or videos or pictures involved. So I always advise people, once you start an application, finish up with your application. Don't think they'll be waiting for you because remember, you're not the only one. You're not the only one that is what um, writing for an application. So please understand the requirements before you apply. There are some grants you are not eligible for. Probably your industry or maybe your the number of years. You hear things like, the business should at least be running for three years, should be running for five years, and you're just starting, for example, and you're applying. It's just a waste of time. All right. And the third thing is to pre uh, prepare and review a proposal. So you read the guidelines thoroughly, outline your proposal, write clear and concise content. Now, you may not... Uh, it's always good you write this yourself. That is the best because it's your business, you know how to properly present it or you should know how to properly present it. If you feel like uh, you're not maybe well equipped to writing, you could employ somebody to write for you or you write it yourself and give it to them to proofread and help you with whatever correction that is needed, right? So review for compliance, evaluate the impact and seek feedbacks. Um, as a student, some years ago, I started writing grants applications from my university days. And all through my university days, I think I wrote about two or three grants. And I did not get any one of them. Not because I didn't know what to write, but because I didn't know how to write what I needed to write. There is a way to write a grant application. You don't just write because you are fascinated by your idea or your idea is the best in the world. Yes, your idea might be beautiful, but if you don't know how to present your um, story, you don't know how to present your idea, it may not sound as interesting to the reader as it sounds to you. Remember that it's your idea, you're already excited about it. In fact, you feel like this idea needs, the, the world needs this idea. Very correct. But that is just you and yourself in your room. You need to convince somebody that doesn't care about you necessarily or somebody that doesn't um, work for or work with you to enjoy the idea. So as someone that wants to write for grants, you also need to understand the art of storytelling. Art of storytelling. All right, so that's like the basic thing to go through. First of all, consult constant and daily research for available grants and opportunities understand the requirements, then you prepare the proposal or business plan as the case may be, you submit on time and the review process begins. Now, how do you identify suitable grant opportunities? First of all, define your objectives. Define your objectives. You need to clearly clarify, you know, clarify what your goal is. At this current stage in your business, what kind of funding do you need? From what do you need a sheet, somebody to become a shareholder? Do you need to have an equity kind of funding? Do you need a loan? Do you need a grant? These are different types of uh, funding that you can have. So you need to, okay, uh, at this point, I just need the money that I can use to do business and give it back without any future repercussion. That's like saying a loan. So you just need the loan to a business and you'll be able to pay back after a period of time and move on with your business. Or, okay, you feel like you need to get somebody else on board so that is you want to share, sell a part of your business. So you need to define your goal before applying for grants. You, if you keep applying for just any other grant, you keep ending up, you will end up um, negotiating or compromising your standards because from time to time, different grants or funding bodies has different expectations that they want to attend to. So if you tweak and keep tweaking and keep changing and keep changing to suit every funding, you will end up losing, your business will just be shapeless because you will have adjusted a lot of things just to suit the funding body. Meanwhile, the business itself is going into extinction. All right, so the next thing is to review eligibility criteria. We said that consider your niche. Every business has a niche. Review your, um, so in this niche, 
can someone or I just need two persons, you can go to the comment section. Um, just tell me what industry is your business? Like tell me the business you do and the industry. I just need the business you do and the industry. I usually get a little surprised that Albu are not so sure of the industry they belong to. So you can either unmute quickly tell me or you write in the comment section. I'm waiting. What business you do and what industry is your business? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. My name is Cynthia. It's your man, Cynthia Bolje. I run a sales club hub limited. A sales club hub is in the business of capacity building through vocational education. And the sector we operate in is edutech. Also education, yes. Okay, that's straightforward. Thank you. Somebody else. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning to Catherine. I'm happy bad. Oh, one by one, please. Happy bad. Go on, please. Good morning, everyone. I'm happy bad. I am into fashion designing, which is in the manufacturing industry. From okay. okay, great, great. Okay, somebody else was trying to talk. Thank you. Okay, is that all? Good morning, everyone. Yeah, good morning. My also. name is Esther from House of Gold. Um, oh. In House of Gold, we are into cardigan knitting and um, sports. We have everything, uni school uniform. We also make for corporate organizations. So the, we are under um, fashion industry. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, we could say fashion and manufacturing, yeah, because you yeah. probably produce yourself. Good morning. Right. Yes. Yeah. Good morning, Peculia. Good morning. Yeah. I'm into dropshipping, coaching, and uh, digital marketing. My business falls into e-commerce and digital marketing. E-commerce and what? Digital marketing. Oh, digital we marketing. We train and we um, build a platform for them to market and get connected to customers. Oh, okay. 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 Marketing. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. I know women are smart, so uh, I know I shouldn't have problem with people knowing their industry. All right. Thank you. So it's important that you understand your industry so that when you're pitching to investors or to a grant body, um, you are actually responding to the question they're asking, all right? Because everybody that comes out to give fundings, to give money, okay? I see a lot of people in the comment section. Thank you. Thank you so much for responding. I see. Sorry, sorry. Can I ask a quick question on this? Oh. Um, yes. Okay, quickly. Go on quickly, quickly. Are you still there? Okay, I guess not. All right, let me go on. Maybe if she connects again, we can proceed. So you need to understand. See, oh. um, question. Which one? Sorry, I can't hear. Can you start from scratch? The line is breaking. I said, you mentioned, when I said that we are under, um, Fashion industry. You said I it, it can all, also be manufacturing because I manufacture by myself. Of course, yes, we do that. But yeah. then, if you are applying and you under the section, the there are options. You see, manufacturing, uh, production, fashion. Which one best suits something like this that we do in House of Gold? We. which is a creative and that we need and we make um, sports wears by ourselves. I think that is under fashion. But when you now have fashion and you also have uh, manufacturing, which is the best to choose? Okay, so uh, I was still going to get to things like that. You respond according to the interest of the funding body. Usually the funding bodies would have particular interest. So okay. you 
speak according to the interest per time. So now, for example, you are in the fashion and manufacturing. So if you read about the organizers, just like part of the research I spoke about, you will understand what their interest is. Okay, these people support more fashion or they support more manufacturing. So you just align under the one that they have more interest with that your business also falls in. Do you get that? Okay, yeah, thank you. So it's important before you apply your research, your funding body, yeah. So let me just go on quickly. I believe I've answered that question. So yes, thank you so much. Like number four, yeah, I said, yeah, I said review past recipients. So as much as possible, if this particular grant body is legitimate, because there's a lot of fake ones online, they would have those they funded before, except they are just starting, uh, which is rare these days. So if it's the one that has been funding people over time, you can always go online. LinkedIn is a very resourceful place. Usually, anybody that's gotten the grants or um, a program before, they will put it on their profile, like, okay, um, a lot, and I'm alumnus of this particular grant body, just you know, trying to promote themselves. So when you use the keyword of that particular grant or um, funding body to search on LinkedIn, there's a probability you'll see their past recipients. So you just you know, politely reach out to them in their DMs and they will respond to you, some of them anyway, will respond to you and you can ask for tips they will tell you exactly what the grant body is looking for. And the moment you can play to what the grant body is looking for, the rest is actually history, right? So a lot of people apply for grants blind, blindly without properly searching for the um, tips that could help them when they are writing. All right, let me go on now. So this element of successful grant proposals, these are like the basic things. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This eight outlines is the basic thing that any grant body will ask. Now, this is not exhaustive in the sense that there are many times different grants or funding bodies would come up with uh, their own customized requirements. However, no matter how customized their requirements are, they cannot but ask for these things. These following things can come in different names, but these are like the basic thing they would ask for. So usually there's a title, that's if you're writing a proposal, if not to be your business name or a project name. You know, sometimes they ask you what project you want to execute that we can fund and the like. The project summary or what is called the executive summary. I don't know if you guys have had a class on business plan writing, you could just help me in the comment section to know if this class have had that or not. Yes, we have. If you've had it, so that I will just go on. Yeah, oh, excellent. So I'm sure you guys are familiar with uh, executive summary, what it's about. So if you're familiar with, it, familiar with the executive summary, it's just the same thing here. So like I said, the name can change from organization to organization when you're trying to fill the application. So the executive summary is the last thing you should write in your business plan after writing every other thing, right? It should be, it's like the, uh, a straightforward essay for a lead man to understand the bulky thing you have written. So it has to be interesting, it has to be uh, juicy, inviting, it should not be boring, it should be properly written, right? Organizational background. It is important that uh, even though you are the CEO, the COO, which other one, the CTO, and all the C's, you know, in your company, maybe you're a startup, for example, for your example, still you need an organizational structure. Now, this structure, you need people on board. When you're presenting to a grant body or a funding body, whichever the case is, you need to be able to show them that, okay, you are the founder, this person is running the, you know, the you have a technical person that deals with the technical aspect of your business, and you probably have a creative person, and you probably have an accounting person, and a legal person. Now, this, all of these people doesn't have to necessarily work full-time with you, all right? It's just to show how 
organized you have, you know, for the people that are funding you, it's to show them that uh, it's not just about you. Not, there is not just one person seated in their room somewhere saying they have a business, that there's a proper structure that their funding is going to uh, help to move forward. Now, the needs statement. All right. So since you have done business plan, probably you have touched on elevator pitch. Are you, am I right? Yes. Yes. Okay, excellent. So um, we know what elevator pitch already is about, so I don't need to go over that. So this need statement is more like the elevator pitch. Uh, for me, I don't know what the person the facilitator has said, but for me, I try to break it into four things. First of all is the problem you're solving. Secondly is the solution you're bringing to the table. Fourth is the impact of your solution to on that problem, and fourth is the ask. You need to ask mid statement. Tell them the problem I'm solving, the um the solution I'm bringing, which is actually my business. Then the impact of the business and the ask. All right. So since we've done elevator pitch class, that's that. Then you do it like a project description or narrative, a project description or narrative describing in details what you want to do. Then you talk about your budgeting, all right? Budget narration, your goals, and sustainability plan. So basically, this is like a basic structure for every grant or proposal you want to write. Other things can come in later, but these are the basics. All right. So... The executive summary, you guys already knows what that is about. So you need to have it well written. Statement of need is important. Project description. Okay, this is just describing each one. All right, so budgeting. Budgeting. Very, very important. Um, most... Are you someone saying something? Yes, sir. Sir, please, we want, I want to know more okay. about that. Uh, the executive process. Are there specific uh, roles that are expected to be seen in a, in a, a, a business structure? Okay. About, yeah. yeah, well, to... so naturally, I cannot say for all businesses, but naturally you should have the founder of Uh, the working out of the thing. It's a, for example, in agriculture, there should be a farmer or a, somebody with a farming understanding or agricultural understanding. Okay, someone peculiar, you can't hear me. Yes, sir, yes. when you started, I wasn't hearing anything. The line was actually breaking. Okay, is it better now? Yes, yeah, very much better. Okay, so the question was, are there specific um, persons or posts on the organization structure? Yes. Aside the founder itself, you need a technical person. What I mean by a technical person, for example, if you're in fashion, just in case the founder itself is not a fashion designer, you need a fashion designer on that team. Somebody that has like a practical knowledge on how fashion works. I mean practical knowledge on how sewing itself works. If you're a uh, agricultural, agricultural tech or whatever, you need like the person developing the app, the developer itself. You need probably a farmer or somebody with an agricultural background, right? Because it doesn't make sense having an agricultural tech company and everybody is a developer on the team. Doesn't make sense. The question would be that you guys are not going to be realistic because the you need someone that has the knowledge of what goes on on the ground. So that's what I mean. So you need a technical person on the team. You'd also need, if you can, a creative person or a marketer. You can put creative and marketing together in some sort. If you, you can separate them, of course, but you may not have to separate so many. So because you need to tell them, okay, you have the idea. 
This is the man or woman that will put the idea into life. This is the person that will market, help us with the marketing strategy. This is the person that will help us with our bookkeeping, with our finances, and probably a legal person on the team. So having these basic structures would show your investors that you know what you're doing, that you have the, uh, the needed skills on ground to see this business work out. So that is what I mean under the organization. Look at your business carefully. What skills are not, what skills in particular can you not do without? Those are the skills that you need to put the persons on the team, especially just in the organization structure that, okay, we have this person, this person. With a combination of these three or these four or five persons, we'll be able to successfully execute this business or project. Is that clear? Yes, sir. So is it necessary to add the accounting or financial or treasurer in the structure? In the, is it the necessary? Term? Yes, sir. To add to also among the team members, is it compulsory? Will it be used um, uh, against you if you don't have provision for treasurer, financial secretary, or something? Well, it is good if you can have such person on your team, all right? However, if you don't, you need to be able to explain how you are doing your accounting. Probably you have, you're outsourcing it. Probably you're, okay. you have an experience in it. So you need to be able to know, make sure that there is a, somebody is covering up that gap. So that's All just right, the investor would need. Okay, thank you. So let me just, let me go on. Um, Okay, so I was talking about budgeting. That budgeting is quite important. Um, most business people want to run from, from this budget and financial aspect of their businesses because you know, your business idea is always very fascinating until it's time to talk about the money part, the accounting part. All right. So uh, on that goes an objective. Your goal needs to be smart. We know what smart is specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-bound. All right, you need to sound realistic to whoever you are speaking to. Don't let it sound too good to be true. They will they will suspect you easily. Or uh, I don't know if you guys watch um there's these shows they do. Is it Lions Den now? There's one that is called um, yeah, there's a Lions Den, there's Shark Tank, and the likes like that. So there was this particular one for Nigeria. I can't really collect the name right now. So a guy came up and the business idea was just amazing. The numbers he was pulling forward was great. But when they started asking questions, then they realized that the business does not really have like a tomorrow. Because the business, not because the business is bad, but because the businessman or the founder itself is just excited about the idea. He has not thought about it beyond himself, right? He hasn't thought into the future and the lives. So when you're writing, Remember, you are trying to tell a story. So when you're writing a proposal or a grant, put in mind that you're trying to write a story. The reason why it's going to be like a story is because the person reading it has to somewhat enjoy it enough to be interested in what you're saying. All right. So um, small, small things like this may also come up, like mission statements, organizational values, structures, and the history. These are very important things you should have and it. All right. So sustainability plan is your idea sustainable, your partnerships and collaborations, right? Uh, somebody might say they don't have partner or they don't have collaboration and the likes. Uh, sometimes your competitors are your partners. Do we agree? Yes, yes, very, yeah. very well. Uh -huh, excellent, excellent. So sometimes, so nobody should say I don't have a partner or a collaborator. Sometimes those that you're competing with are also partners. All right, so so sometimes, aside these things I've said, some organizations might ask for extras, like give us a multimedia pitch, a video, and since we have done our elevator pitch, it shouldn't be difficult to do a video and all those things. Okay. So grant writing is never about the need of your organization. Don't just go all out. We need this, we need this, we need this, we need that. Okay? These people naturally don't know you and don't care about your business initially. 
All right. So founders wants to know about the needs being served. The problem you are solving, you need to be able to craft the problem you are solving in a nice way. So uh, can I have just two ladies tell me if their problem statement, the problem they are solving? Just two people, please unmute and quickly tell me the problem you're solving. Okay, sir. Good morning, sir. Yes. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, I can. Yes, sir. I'm Abed Gil now, yes, Mr. Akishi. And I'm um, the project lead and CEO of EcoCollect, a sustainable ecosystem innovation. And our problem statement is so according to the Guardian newspaper in 2021, the Commissioner of Um Water and Waste Resource, Tunji Bilo, said that despite the fact that they are finding they are making measures to reduce waste in the society, there is over 14,000 metric tons of waste on a daily basis. And so this is why we have seen a need to leverage on technology to allow residents to request for pickup of waste on our app and website, then refund their wallet and resell to eco innovators, recyclers and upcyclers for use. Oh, wow. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So thank, I think the class you guys have had is really effective. Um, the only thing I would like you to add is um, what does, if your kind of solution doesn't exist, what will happen to the society? Okay, sir. So without a solution, it simply means that there will be a level of backwardness and um, backwardness in trying to uh, solve with um, pollution and private agencies and government will be finding it hard, whereas we can just input technology and make things easier for people to do and um, to uh, request for it. Yes. And the fact let's, of funding. Yes. Let's take it a step further to say that um, if your solution doesn't exist, waste will not be cleared, right? Waste, waste to be cleared, but okay. not at the rate at which we would leverage on technology. It will be cleared, but there will still be more waste, and people will not be enlightened to know that, oh, this is what there are things that you can do to actually reduce the waste. It will be okay. cleared, but so there will be I'm more pollutions. The, the, that means if your solution doesn't exist, the rate at which waste will be cleared will be slower, and there will still be waste in some sort. Yes, so there will still be the production of, of those waste. What happens to people? How does the waste affect people? Okay, so, so first of all, the waste affects people. Basically, it's taking a land mass. Most waste um, sites could have been used to build other places, other infrastructure for the society. So that's one. Two, um, without proper waste disposal, people result in things like burning, which will affect the climate. And also, it will also uh, affect the fact that people mindset about waste and the belief that waste is just a regular stuff that we dispose instead of reconverting waste to wealth would be a major yes, problem. Sir. So people will not Absolutely. be analyzing on the fact that, the fact that waste is wealth. Yes. Okay. So we are talking, we are talking um, carbon emission. We are talking flooding, possibly. We are talking um, sickness, some sort, right? Um, because of waste. Am I right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. So these are now the thing is uh, for me, I like to get to how it affects people because usually if you meet the real funding people, the problem that sells the most is the one that affects people's lives. So they are more like, uh, for example, if you meet an investor that doesn't want carbon emission. So it means in a way, why you're making your presentation, that carbon emission has to do what? Do what? It has to come in, right? Because that's a person's interest and definitely it aligns with what you do. So um, you've done a very interesting job, but I still feel you need to have a bit of how it affects people's lives on the minutest uh, level, like the smallest. Thank you, sir. Uh -huh. So thank you so much. Yes, that was thank you so much, sir. Yes, do we have sir. someone else? Anyone else? Please just speak. Just on mute and speak. Okay, Peculiar is speaking. Okay. My business name is Come Online Niger. Um, we are went through uh, comprehensive training, digital training and entrepreneurship. 
can't hear you anymore. How to cut it? Well, to entrepreneurship training and uh, digital training as well, we provide uh, market. Uh, I think your line is Oh my goodness. Right. Is it better now? Okay, yeah. All right, my business name is uh, uh, Come Online Ninja. Okay. We, we, we are into um, digital empowerment and uh, entrepreneurial, entrepreneurship skills. We focus more on empowering individuals like stay at home mom, undergraduate, young graduate, and workers who need extra source of income. We teach them how to leverage on social media platforms to start a business with zero capital through dropshipping. Okay. Um, oh my goodness. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it seems breaking in between here and there. Seems okay. You could probably just type exactly maybe the problems for me in the chat box, then I'll respond from there. Okay. It's okay, like can I talk? Yes, please go yes. on. Okay, so my business name is Sintos Creations. I'm a nutritionist and I'm into catering. The reason why I'm into catering is because many people just eat for eating sake. So I try as much as possible to combine my knowledge as a nutritionist with my role as a caterer so that people will have um, the nutrients they need for their body. I look at people's uh, nutritional requirements before offering them the meals that will suit them so that they can stay healthy. You know, health is wealth, is wealth rather. It's important for us to know what we eat, the reason why we are eating it, so that we can stay healthy. Many people that have money today, they just eat for eating sake. They eat what is available without knowing what is good for their health. So I try as much as possible to educate people on what to eat and then provide for them what to eat so that they won't come down with illnesses that can be prevent uh, that can be prevented through their lifestyles and then um, and um, behavior to food. You understand? So that is what. Okay. I'm All right, fantastic, fantastic. Um, I feel you need to work on your elevator pitch in the sense that um, uh, what is what happens to people? Remember the last lady, the first lady that spoke started with the statistics or like an information background. So for yes, example, sir. if you were telling us um, two out of every three households in Africa suffers high rate, uh, suffers mortality, I think that's child death, right? Suffers yeah. mortality due to bad nutritional, whatever, you understand? So that's the problem. Okay. People are dying because they are eating wrongly. And it, okay. it's coming from an informed perspective. Right, so you you have to paint the problem in a way that the person should be empathic okay. with you. Then you now come up with your solution. So I know you are doing a great job and you love your solution, but your investor is not really interested yet until they see the problem that you're solving that also affects them that they have interest in solving. I mean, so um, just we we'll just find a way to trick it around there because they are human. You are talking to human beings, right? So uh, they they have some sort of um, emotional touch to their decision making. All right, thank, thank you, you very you. much. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so um, I don't know what the time is right now. Let me check uh, so that because I don't want to go beyond the time I was given. Oh, my God. Can I oh, wow, we have like less than an hour, 30 minutes, okay? Let me go on. All right, so, Founders wants to know about the need being solved, the problem being solved. So please, everyone, please make sure you work on your problem statement first. And it's always good if you can get a statistics or an information background, right? So not be like your problem. No, there's a possibility of um, coming up with a problem because it happens in your community alone. And um, investors, founders, does not want to just solve problems that will exist in your community alone. Remember, we talked about, I haven't mentioned it, scalability. If your business cannot be scaled, you may not be able to get funds as much as you should. That's one of the problems a lot of people that apply for grants are facing. 
they are putting forward solutions that is too localized. It is just the environment that they are talking about. The, pollution, the solution cannot go beyond their current environment. And because of that, it's, um, it's difficult for them to really have anyone want to invest in them. So please, no matter how small you feel your idea is, think of it in a global scale. Re re rework it in a way that you know that, okay, after five years, we can move to this level. After 10 years, we can move to this level. It has to be scalable. If not, an investor will not really be interested in funding such idea. Okay, Peculiar said uh, she's come online. Nigeria is a pioneering company in Nigeria that provides comprehensive digital training and entrepreneurship to empower individuals to start their own online businesses through dropshipping zero capital. All right, this is wonderful, but this is all about your business. You have not told us the problem, the problem actually. If this your business does not exist, what will happen to the people that should have benefited? That is the problem you are solving. I think that makes it simple. If this your business does not exist, what will be the fate of those that are currently benefiting from that business? So with that, you can get the problem you are solving. All right, we'll go on. The purpose of the of grant writing is to convince an organization or person to fund your proposal. Research before you begin, you'll mention that, and you plan before you write. Okay, I have an organizational structure. We said that already. What do you hope to achieve with your project and wish to benefit? What are your target audience, basically? How does it go? The amount of money you need, you need to be specific when you're asking or you're presenting. Usually, if it's a grant, you already told how much is available for you to get. But if it's not a grant, most times, if it's that you're pitching to an investor, they can tell you between this and this, or you tell you just tell us how much you need. And um, there's a possibility, you know, they have all the money you need. So you need to be specific on what you need. Since you guys have done a class on business plan, I want to assume you have probably written business plans with financial projection, right? So on this, you should have stated how much you will be needing. All right, what kind of funding do you need for your project? We will get into that very soon. So in case you need fast money, forget about grants. Any grant that is fast at all, it takes six to nine months. That, that is the fast one. It takes six to nine months before it comes. So if you need money like now, you need to start writing other things, not grants. All right, so these are types of fundings that exist. These are types of funds that exist. The first one is bootstrapping. Bootstrapping is very simple. It's basically the first kind of funding any business person must engage in. All right. Basic, bootstrapping is basically you are getting a job and you are saving up to start up a business. Or you are gathering from your savings over years. Somebody gave you money, your family and friends. You trying to work for someone to start your business. Basically, So basically it's saying Bootstrapping is starting to look for money on your own to start to do your business properly, all right? And that's the first level of business anybody should do. Nobody wants to give you the, your capital initially in the sense that your capital is the money you're using to take their first risk. Investors don't want you to take their whole money as the capital. That is, you're using their money to take risk. If your business is worthwhile, you should have trusted it enough to invest your own personal money. Then you cannot convince somebody else to give you their own money now. Since you have taken that first step of risking your money to start your business. So I believe I'm speaking to people that have started business this morning. So let's go to the other ones. Crowdfunding. Crowdfunding is very, very possible in Nigeria. Yes, a lot of stories around it, but it's very possible. I know of a few platforms. I've not used them. But well, probably they work. If you have used them before, I would like to know. But crowdfunding, I always tell this simple example, which is you can actually gather your friends and family and um, invite them to a dinner night or something or a gathering. You just make a light refreshment and you come forward with a properly prepared pitch deck. 
Uh, I want to assume you have had a pitch deck class also. So if you present your idea very well and the people you are talking to actually have the kind of money you are looking for, they are your family and friends. I believe they should believe in you first. But because most people have not proven through their consistency that they are really interested in running a business and not just side also, many people will not really be ready. Even their family members doesn't want to invest in what they do. So I believe anyone can be convinced, especially family and friends, to fund you. And that's crowdfunding, just trying to get people around you to support your business. The venture capitalists and angel investors are similar, but these people, especially venture capitalists, they fund people that have businesses already. And in fact, you have to have a particular capital base before a venture capitalist can give you money. Venture capitalists have good money to give. I mean, really, really good money. It's hundreds of thousands of dollars. They can give you that. But you need to show some track record. Same thing as angel investors. Sometimes angel investors can be angelic. That means they can be nice. They can start give you money as a startup, but it is rare for you to see any investor in that category to give just any startup money to start up. They are willing to ask, or they are going to ask you for track record. Okay, how many years have we been doing this? How many customers do you have? How much revenue have you generated? Whether it is profit or not, you have generated this amount of money. So that is the thing. So if you've been running business for a while and um, you, you are sure you have track records and you need the kind of money venture capitalists to give, and usually venture capitalists will ask you for a share of your company, usually. They ask you for a share of your company. So unless you are ready to start giving out a share of your company, which I believe everybody on this call should have a vision of doing, there's no big business that is run by just a sole proprietor. You might have somebody in front that everybody knows, but there are other pool of what investors around. All right, accelerator and incubators are quite popular, but I differentiate them this way. Incubators is for those that are just starting business, while accelerator is for those that want to scale their business, right? So they, the two of them do almost the same thing in the sense that they provide you access to resources, they provide you access to mentorship, they provide you access to trainings like this, and some sometimes provide access to funding. But basically, they are helping you, equipping you with the right resource to see that your business thrive. So incubators are basically for newcomers, startups. Accelerator is also for startups, but basically it's to improve their growth, accelerate their successes. Grants, we all know what grant is. Sweet money, easy, but the writing can be quite tasking. There's no need for refund in that situation. And a loan, just like a loan, a loan is, you need to pay back after a while. But usually, for you to get any meaningful loan, most of them will require um, collaterals, your collateral. And I always tell new businesses, please, I this is a personal opinion, though, don't start your business with a loan. You will only increase the pressure you have to face. Running a business alone, and especially if you are running it in Nigeria, is a lot of pressure already. So adding a loan pressure is... Um, it's like accelerating your success to failure. <laughs> so please, unless you know you know you are sure of how to pay back, you have the required collateral. It's not really advisable to start with a loan. Now we have convertible debt and revenue financing. These are quite similar. This is like somebody giving you money or instrument for a share of your company in the future. Revenue financing is saying, okay, we will support your business now we will start getting a particular percentage from your revenue in the future, in an agreed future. Convertible debt, also the same thing, giving you um, instruments, support, money, that, okay, in the nearest future, we will start collecting this kind of money. Do we understand the type of uh, funding that exists? Can you yes, start here the comment session? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right, so let's go on. Now, 
So stages in startup financing. So we have the pre-seed stage, the seed stage, series A, B, C. For those in the tech, I know you should be very familiar with the series A, B, C, because I always hear them. They're always talking series A, B, C, and there's so much money in tech. This, yes, this. sir. Uh -huh. <laughs> so <laughs> there's so much. Oh, who is drawing on my screen? Oh, okay. Let me quickly attend to that. Um, please don't draw on the screen. Thank you. Uh, okay. Oh, stop to stop this thing. Okay, stop sharing. Just a minute. I just want to take care of that. Um, someone was sharing this um, right now on the screen. Okay, so you should be back now. So the precede funding, where most people are still dancing, is the precede funding. Uh, this is like the initial, the bootstrapping stage, the crowdfunding stage. You are just starting your business. The first money you are investing as a startup, that's the precede. Or the money is basically coming from you, right? The registration you are doing, the rentage, probably the initial investments you are making in your business. So these are people in the pre-seed and probably most of us on this call. Now the seed stage, now you are get already sourcing funds from others. So you get things like seed capital and the likes. So this is um a little higher stage than precede. Precede is just about you, yourself, funding what you're doing, all right? But seed stage, now somebody is getting interested in what you're doing and they are giving you money. Series A is now an advanced level of funding, fundraising. Then you can keep having series A, B, C, D, blah, 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 and the likes. Bridge financing, convertible notes, IPOs. You have to be really, 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 really big to go into these other ones from number six downward. So let me go to this chart that explains easily. So if you can see the chart on the screen, it explains in a summarized version um, what rounds of funding exist. So if you are still fund being funded by your friends and family and yourself, and a small, small grant here and there, you know, and, and an incubator program, you know, you are still in the precede stage, all right? So um, you may just have these languages in your mouth, you know, when you say things like this in front of investors, um, so they come across as someone that knows what they are doing, they understand the stage they are. So it's good to have some of these languages in your mouth when you are speaking or writing a grant, right? So you can see the kind of money that um, is being raised at each stage, the kind of money you are, is being raised. So the chat explains it easily. Now, one big problem that most business people have is valuing their business. A lot of people undervalue, some people overvalue, right? So if you have to, who, can, who has valued their business? Anybody here that has a correct business valuation? How much is your business worth? Let's see, let's see. I'm waiting in the comment section. Has anybody actually valued their business? Okay, no one, no one. Is that so? Well, for me, I did the valuation myself, and I, I might be incorrect. So, okay, what did you use? What factors did you consider? You said uh, what correct valuation. You what did you say? What factors did you consider when doing your valuation? I looked at the the assets. Okay. Basically, those are my tools. You know? Although I know that some of them will actually depreciate with time. And mm -hmm. I said, I know some of them will depreciate with time. Yeah, I'm yeah. with you. So I, you know, I just did a guesswork. I just oh, looked at it. Okay. I have um, the prices and then looked at the um, depreciation value and you know, I just put it up together like that. Okay. All right. Uh, any other person that has tried? 
Okay, I guess um, not much. So I've not really okay. attempted that. Um, good morning, yeah. sir. Yeah, good morning. Um, this is Isioma, Cynthia Abogio Um, okay. I haven't gotten an auditor to evaluate my business, but based on the capital I've invested, um, the amount of goodwill I've generated, the amount of um, grants, um, um, invested in my business so far. Um, I got mm -hmm. a, a workspace voucher from LSCTF to the tune of 1.8 million in 2023. I invest, yes, I invested, I've invested um, a sum of 4 million, um, which comprises of my um, assets um, and other stuff. So this is what I have used in valuing my business. All right, excellent. Well, I'm seeing someone say their business is going to be worth three trillion dollars in 2031. That's 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 amazing. Okay, so um, this is not a business valuation class. So I'll give us that personal assignment. Basically, to value your business, there are different methods. Actually, uh, the basic one is using your balance sheet. Your balance sheet, I mean your in your cash flow, your income, your expenditure. But that is usually not accurate in the sense that you are using the past because your balance sheet contains past transactions. So it's like using your past to value your business that is still alive and has a future. So you see that that may not be very accurate. So if you use just your current cash flow, that's limiting. And that's, you are going to be undervaluing your business. Now, one of the methods you could use is you'll be considering your market value, the number of customers you... Now, when you want to correctly value your business, you are looking at projections. More, most of the time, you should look at the projection, okay? Based on how we are doing now, if this continues, we are supposed to do these numbers by this number of years. You are looking at your current assets. In fact, you are looking at your personal time. For example, uh, for you are in the business and you have a what, right? You have a value. Your your kind of skill, your kind of personality. Um, no, your kind of skill. I mean, has a value in the marketplace. So if you have to go get a job, uh, you are going to be paid a certain amount of money for the time you are investing to work in that business. That has a value. Um, another thing you need to consider is um, financial projection. Okay, how well are you guys doing financially currently? So how well will you do? So you can do that assets. Then your market size, how much market are you planning to cover? So if you can put all of these together, you should be able to get a reasonable value. But it's always best to get an accountant or an auditor to do this for you so that you can accurately get the number. Because if you meet an investor with a wrong evaluation, if you undervalue yourself, the investor will rip you off by giving you a percentage that will finish, finish your business. And if you overvalue yourself, they will consider you as not being truthful. So it's best to do what? To have your business properly valued. All right, so I'm not going so much into business valuation, but it's good that a few of us has attempted it. You can read more online about how to value your business. So basically, these are different rounds of funding that exist. And you can see the amount of money you can raise depending on how much you are worth as of present. So the question is, how much can you raise and how much is your business currently worth? Okay, so you know how much money you are looking for. All right. So for you to prepare for funding, thank God you bought a business plan class, pitch deck, elevator pitch. So you need to have all these documents somewhere in the cloud and you can pull them out anytime, any day and just submit for an application. The most important and the part people are scared the most is a financial projection. So usually this is supposed to come in an Excel sheet that will contain your cash flow, your inflow, your balance sheet. It will contain everything. You know, Usually there's a coded sheet for it. Uh, that you can just input numbers and the sheet will help you calculate every other thing, draw the graphs, and you can easily submit that. So I believe you've been 
properly informed about that. So there's no need to spend more no, time. On that. No, no, please do. You've had a business plan class, right? Yes. Okay, okay. Okay, you didn't really get to the financial projection part. I didn't get it. That's the major I'm... area I'm having problem with application. Oh, okay. Okay, but you have like a coded Excel sheet that you can use, right? I don't have. No, sir, we do not have. No, so we don't we have. appreciate if we can um get one. Yes, please. Getting one from me is uh that that's going to be at the cost. I that you can speak to the um organizers or something. They will, I'm sure, we'll work out something. But let me just talk about it briefly. So basically, the financial projection, just like if you want to get loan, uh, want to get something from somewhere. After talking, you know, the business plan is stories. You are writing a lot of things, right? So the financial projection is going to show where the final, the money is coming from and where the money is going. So in the next, usually they will ask you for at least three years financial projection. Probably if you search online, you might, you might get a template. I'm not sure, but uh, maybe you guys speak with the organizers if the reach an agreement with me. I can send like um, a sheet for you guys. I don't know if anybody here has ever applied for, is applying for the Tony Melu Foundation. I, I did, but I didn't get it. Oh, I did. Sorry. I did last year. I got to... Um, the semi-finals are put in another group for two thousand dollars. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Um. Well. Um. Okay. So if you're on that group, because they usually give their beneficiaries there is this a coded by financial template. Yeah, I have the template. Yes. Ah. Uh, so okay. I think that's. I think it's a ten years projection, sir. That one. How many? I can't remember. I think ten years. Because. Five years, five years. Five years, okay, great. So if you are willing, you could share with everybody on the group. So and maybe we can now, you know how to fill it, right? Yes, I do. Uh, so I, I advise, um, you know, so that you guys don't delay, you have a network of, um, let me see who is speaking to me first. Uh, um, I want to mention your name for the class to come for you. <laughs> is it, is your man, right? Yes, Isioma. Okay, Isioma. So, uh, please, you guys should source for Isioma. She has a five years financial projection plan, and she can help with how to go about it. So, because it's an important document, from time to time, investors would ask for it. All right. So, I think that solves that part. Uh, if there's any question, the organizers organizers can always reach out. Because uh, when I got the grant in 2019, yeah. It, the financial template was 10 years projection. I didn't know they've reduced it to five years now, but it was 10 years projection. So that was that. All right. So you need to validate your idea. Make sure you've started the idea already. It's very rare. There's only angel investors like Tony Lumelo that will give you $5,000 with, with just having a, a pure idea and not having a business. I don't know who else will give you that kind of money or more without you having started the business, except your family members. All right, you need legal compliance. You must have registered your business. Please, if you're on this, on this call, I've not registered your business. I don't know. You should register your business. At least have a business registration, all right? Your tax uh, should also be registered. You should have a proper bank account, as in a business bank account. Don't use your personal bank account because in the future, as I believe I'm talking to people that plan for their businesses to grow. So in yes. the future, if your business is planning to grow, you will need to account for every money you have spent since inception. If you cannot properly account, or maybe you were, you started with your personal business, a personal account, I mean, separating the numbers will be difficult then. So I always advise people, just open the business account now, all right? Open the business accounts, have your tax fixed up. If you cannot go through the total stress of um, this FIRC, I think um, Lagos State has a tax website that you can just leverage on um, the state's tax. 
Yeah. There's also a joint tax board. These are different platforms that will not require you to have so much registration. In fact, they are online. You just go online, get the tax number. So you can always use it as time goes on, right? And if you need to upgrade later, fine. But for now, have these basic things handy. All right, proper bookkeeping. Please, if you're on this call and you're still operating like old old fathers and mothers that write inside exercise book, I sold 50,000 today, I bought 10,000, you know, very crude. That is, I don't know. There is no future in that because from time to time, um, in 2020, during COVID-19, Facebook came out with a program uh, that gave money and ads credit for Facebook. So I was opportune to also get that grant in 2020. And one of the documents that they required for you to qualify was three years as not projection, not financial projection now, but financial records for the past three years. So imagine if you've been writing in a book, I don't know how you plan to compile it in the short period you had to submit that, or if you've not had any proper bookkeeping, and you cannot submit your entire, um, what's the name now? Entire bank account, uh, bank statement. Well, I don't know if they would have accepted it then, but you know, in your proper accounting system, there will be uh, a description for every transaction, right? Okay, this was what happened here that this money came out, this one went out at the lights. So it was after submitting that three years financial record that I was able to access the grants and the ads um, credit. Now, many people don't have proper accounting for their transactions. So in case you fall under that category, please go online. You will see a lot of bookkeeping uh, softwares that would make it easy for you to just put in, today we sold this amount, we spent this amount, we did this. A day is going to come, your investors will ask for the records and they will not ask you to bring some exercise book or something where in the technological world, you should have a proper place where to keep those things. No matter, even if you have not made profit, they just want to see that, you know, when you have a proper bookkeeping system, it shows how organized and a person of integrity you are, right? These are little, little things that investors watch out for. Build a strong team. By strong, I mean, have the most important people on your team. You cannot be building a tech company and you don't have a developer. You cannot be building a, an agricultural company and you don't have somebody with agricultural background. So you need to consider these things when writing. Have an online presence. If you don't have enough money for your website, which is the best, make sure you have a social media presence. Very important. And please separate your personal social media from your business social media, all right? Don't post, you can advertise your business on your personal social media, but your personal one cannot serve for your business. All right? You need to be able to separate your business from yourself. In fact, if you cannot separate your own money from your business money, it shows you are not organized. It's, in fact, it can mean to an investor that you are not a person of integrity because you will eventually spend your business money, maybe if you run into a fix at some point. So please have these things separated. Learn how to sell yourself and present your business to a complete stranger. During your elevator pitch class, you must have um, learned that. Um, the one I use is, somebody is asking a comment session for an app. I use Wave Apps. All right, Wave uh, Apps. So they have a free version. They have also have a paid version, so you could, you know, check. There are many. There is Zoho. There is. Is it Flutter Wave? When you say you use Wave app, is it Flutter Wave? Or no, no, no. Flutter, there... wave. Flutter wave is a different. Um, is a tech company. You can just check the comment section. I drop this um in there, so you just add maybe dot com to it. So that's that's the one I use. But there are many other ones. There are many other ones. Many other ones just to make sure you have that record. And the, the reason why I use this guy is because, for example, that 2020 when Facebook was all I did was just go there and download, and it gave me like an Excel sheet properly. You know, it was really nice. I was like, Wow, thank God 
I've been doing this. So I just submitted the document and boom, that was like, what? So uh, create a prototype, yes, have a viable business, uh, product already. Market expansion plan. Remember I talk about scalability. Make sure you have planned out, how do you plan to move your business? After two, three years, where do you plan to be? Investors want to be sure that the reason why they are investing aside, what the problem they want to solve is to increase their capital, to increase their money. Okay, if I invest in this business idea, this idea makes sense. But can it travel far? Can this idea go to the world? These are the things they also look at sometimes. All right, quality, commitment, and integrity, very important. Have a clear part on how the funds will be spent. Hmm. In 2019, when I got the Tolly totally Elemelo $5,000 then, there are people in my um, forum then that also got the money but went and used it to get married. Interesting. Some went and used it to buy a car. By now, none of those people have businesses now, right? So, uh, and that happens because, you know, Tony Elumelu, you can always find your way to just appeal to all their, um, all their uh, requirements and eventually, you know, you get the money. What you do with it, because it's a grant, is up to you. Although you signed an agreement that you would spend it on the business you have told them you want to do, but Unfortunately, many Nigerian business people are not people of integrity. So please have a clear part on how you spend money because if you don't have a plan before money reaches your hand, you will spend the money on the plan you did not have. You will just spend it and you find that you've not done much. Ask yourself, how much equity do you are you willing to let go? Thank God at the beginning I asked the question. Most of us say we are okay with 10% of a million dollars. But now your business is just growing. How much percentage are you willing to let go of your business? You need to have this made up in your mind so that the day you appear before an investor, I really encourage everyone to watch that show. Uh, let me quickly get the name online. Is it Shark Tank now? Uh, how to get the Nigerian version. Oh. Okay. I know of Lions Den. Okay, Lions Den. Um, is that Nigerian zone? Okay, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, Lions Den. There's this. Okay, yeah. It's Lions Den. Lions Den. Thank you very much. So, you can just take some time to watch some of the videos to learn how investors think and respond to you. It's, it's, I always watch that. It helps me a lot to see. So, they, on the spot, they'll be asking you, okay, we'll give you all of the money for 10%, for 15%, and blah, blah, blah. And if you are not, if you've not made up your mind before, you may end up falling for the wrong deal that will hurt your business, or you, um, or you, well, there's always time for you to rethink on the, allow people to think about it. But really, you must have had a decision and you are just tweaking it based on the situation and all right, your market size, your growth potential, I talked about scalability already, appropriate valuation of your business. As soon as possible, if you have an accounting friend, somebody that has background knowledge, or you do some YouTube research on how to value your business, you will see some methods that you can use to value your business so that anytime, I don't know who, the, who I'm talking to on this call, but I believe I have business people that really want to get funding for their business. If, you, if that is true, you must have this valuation thing sorted out. You must have your business plan, pitch deck, elevator sorted out. You can meet investors anytime. As, as of now, you should be attending events where you could meet potential investors. Your business would accelerate if you can meet the right investors now. All right. So exit strategy. Exit strategy is basically talking of how much of your when you plan to sell part of your company or all of your company. But unfortunately, Nigerians, we don't ever want to leave our businesses. We want to be there and be king all the time. All right. All right, as I'm running off gradually, gradually, 
Okay, we have, um, so refine your business idea, you know, keep developing, don't sit on your idea. The new things are coming up every now and then. There's really no new business, right? I'm sure you know you're not the only one doing what you're doing. So um, I'm not sure if Tony Elumelu still has that question in their section. There is something in 2019 when we, uh, in 2019 when we did the, what's the name? When I got the phone, I mean, uh, one of the questions they ask is the wow factor about your business. What is fascinating about your business? What am I going to hear that is outside the existing competitors, right? If you don't have that thing, you know, it may be difficult to impress an investor. Their ears are always itchy. In fact, when you are writing proposal, you need to speak about that wow thing, that thing that you are doing that is different from every other person. For example, the first time I heard about a solar fridge, I was really fascinated. Like, wow, this is this is this is amazing. So there's a way you can connect your solar to a refrigerator and be able to sell anywhere, anywhere, anyhow. You know, that's that's quite interesting. So I know you're excited about your current idea, but please make sure you have already worked it, that it will impress anybody that listens to it. And for you to impress someone. There are times where what you are saying is very impressive, but how you are saying it is not as impressive as it should be. So in a way, you need to learn how to present your elevator pitch that it will be very, very interesting. One of the shows that we help is that Lions Day. Just take some time, watch some of the clips, and you see how those guys are doing amazing. All right. Uh, the time of the funding you need, identify the right funding source, build a strong team, network, and seek introduction. So... Uh, at least on this uh, particular call, we have more than 30 persons. More than 30 persons. Um, the, yeah, so please, one of the first things you need to do is network with each other, please. Thank God now, just on this call, we've been able to see someone that would um, give, I believe she'll be willing to give it out, give out a, the financial templates a five years projection financial template and even teach it. That is a lot. So if you can get that and you've known how to write your business plan, then you're your your way to greatness. So please make sure you network. I believe you have a WhatsApp group or a platform where you guys connect. Try as much as possible to connect with everybody on that platform. Try and build a network, build something. They may not have the money you are looking for, but they are. They may have the connection to the person that has the money that you are looking for, or they may have access to someone that has, you know, in twenty twenty, somebody that I knew that I got um um totally aluminum grant. You no, know, I was running my masters in the University of Ibadan then, so I was in Ibadan at that time. Um, so the person knew about my twenty nineteen grant. So somehow connected me, the Ohio State government as of then wanted to um, train some youth, like thousands of youth, on how to do something like this. So the person called me and connected me to the government. And the pay was actually quite interesting. Now, the major point is, it was through network that I was able to connect. There was no way naturally. It's not like I was living in Ohio State before that time. But because I had a network of friends that had these connections, it was easy. So you don't know who you are with on this group. Make sure you take time to network with them. Okay, so I've seen some... I will attend to those things I'm seeing in the comment section soon. All right. Okay, it's a direct message. All right. Thank you. I will attend to it. So due diligence, make sure you search online. There are a lot of fake websites. No grant body or investor will ask you to pay money first to access grant, no, no serious one will do that. They can ask you to pay for a class, that's a different thing, a training, but that when you pay this money, you not get grant. It's not, it's not my rabbit or something. So please, let's be careful when you're searching for opportunities. Negotiating terms, do you know how to negotiate? Can you negotiate? Uh, usually, I, I usually conduct like an exercise when it comes to these, um, Yeah, I usually find it um, interesting, but it's not a physical class. But you need to understand how to negotiate your terms when you are standing face to face. Remember, you are 
let's say you're in front of a billionaire, all right? So what would you, are you sure you can confidently negotiate with someone that is much, much more richer than you, that do not necessarily need you actually, but you need their money? You need to have boosted your self-confidence enough so that when you go to events, you have you have rehearsed. One of the easiest ways to rehearse your elevator pitch is rehearse before the mirror. Rehearse it so much that you can tweak anything in between and it, your mouth will not shake. You know, that confidence alone, it's a lot. It's a lot. We've been, I've been in places where my confidence and ability to communicate my idea has helped me achieve so much. So if you're a business person, some business person says, okay, I, me, I cannot talk. Okay, get someone, get a friend that can do the talking for you if you cannot do it. Although I believe you can learn these things, you know, and do better. Sustain a winning mindset. Uh, if you write 10 uh, grants applications, you'll probably get two or three. Not because you are not good, but because the competition is quite high. But if you can get two or three, you are doing quite well. All right? So learn, unlearn, and relearn things. Apply for as many opportunities as possible. Uh, maintain a financial discipline. Like I said, separate your bank account from your business bank account. In case you are still here, you are receiving your business money in your personal bank account. You are doing it the wrong way. All right? You cannot do serious businesses with people that way, except those that know you personally. Nobody will, that doesn't know you, that wants to give you serious money, will send it to a personal bank account. All right? So get these things sorted. Okay, so uh, we've gone through most things. Um, the most important thing is to secure your funder's interest. Every funding body or investor has personal interest. You must have heard that human beings like to convince ourselves that we uh, that we make decisions logically, but most of our decisions are actually emotional. So also with the investors. So that's why you should have researched the funding body or the funder before you meet with them. They have an interest that they want to fund. Find a way to tweak your business to align with their interests. Find a way to always tweak your business to align with their interests. You are in the fashion industry. And somebody, for example, the lady that does, um, that sells clothes for students, uh, uniform Cardigan. and like. Cardigans, yeah, excellent. So in that kind of business, you are trying to apply for a grant and they are talking about education. Now, it's not time to talk about fashion. It's time to find how, since you are talking to, uh, you are taking care of students, how will this cardigan thing you make affect the academics? So you must be able to tweak in that direction so that the educational interest of the uh, investors is what you are what you are playing towards. Meanwhile, your main business is your cardigan business. But if you cannot do that, it's a waste of time trying to go around it. But there's a way to always tweak these things. It's your idea. Yeah. There's a way it can make it sound like their interest. All right. Um, review funders' instructions, requirement, and submit your proposal. Excellent. So uh, are we familiar with this? Sorry. Are we familiar with this? Yes. Oh, excellent. Excellent. So if you are familiar with this, so uh, you understand that. So I brought this here just because it makes, uh, it gives you a, a simple and straightforward glance at your entire business. And this can help you in your grants writing to know, okay, these are the key things I'm supposed to write. Okay. So excellent. Uh, so track record of success and failure. Uh, track records may be difficult for new business. So when you are trying to get, like I said, it is very rare to see investors that will give money to a new business. Most people want those that have track records. All right. New businesses may start with crowdfunding. Yes, understand the people and the organization involved in grant writing and use your storytelling ability. Storytelling. So for those that are familiar with Niger Brand Chick, um, if you know who she is, you can check her out on Instagram. She's quite good at storytelling. You can learn a thing or two about storytelling from her page. And if you have money, you can attend her class. She's very, very good at storytelling. Very, very, very good. And um, yeah. So writing. Oh, sorry, I didn't get the name of the person. 
Niger brand chick. Niger brand chick. Yeah, Niger brand chick. But basically, storytelling is uh, making your business relatable. That's what storytelling is. The problem I have with a lot of business people is they are always too excited or fascinated by the idea that they forget that the person they are talking to doesn't even care initially. The person doesn't care initially. All right? So you have to be like, okay, this person I'm talking to has an interest. All right? So how can I speak to their interest? That is storytelling. How can I speak in a way that they'll be interested? That's storytelling. Okay, let me move on. Oh, uh, so you need to have KPIs, yes. Avoid grammatical errors. Keep catch the reader's attention. Um, executive summary will discuss this. If the funders has a limit amount of money they want to give to your project, don't ask for more. They've already told you fifteen thousand dollars. You're asking for twenty-five thousand dollars. I don't understand. But if it's an open end that you can ask for what you want, why not? Ask them for as much as you actually need, as long as you've itemized this is what I want and what we need. So usually when your grants or proposal is being reviewed, two things goes down. They do a technical review and a content review. A technical review is um, checking if you adhere to all the guidelines. You know, there are guidelines like uh, 500 words, 300 words here, yeah, all those things. So they are very important. They will check for those things. So that's like the technical review that, okay, did this person seeking to be funded follow all the guidelines stated on the website or wherever the advert was placed? The second one is the content review. Checking what you've written in itself. If it aligns with their goals and objectives. If it also looks... um. If you have the appropriate experts on your team, remember for you to have a tech company, there are people that you cannot but have. Even if you as a CEO, you are also the developer, fine. You still need maybe a code developer or uh, you know, uh, maybe a designer, a product designer, or as the case may be, think of it, what do I need? Now, you don't have to employ these people on your team, but you don't have to employ them at all. What I do sometimes is I just speak to a few friends and say, okay, uh, please, I'm applying for a program or a grant. I'm putting your name as this. I'm putting your name as this in case they reached out to you, all right, so that you can respond as my somebody. Um, that's, that's, not, that's not bad. They're my friends, all right, at least for the purpose. Since you don't have money to employ them full time, but if you have the money, why not employ them full time and put their name? But if they are the people you don't have the money to employ full time, they are your friends. They want your success. They want your business to thrive. They should want your business to thrive. So you can put their names. Make sure they have the expertise, though, because that can they can ask them questions as the case may be. This happens a lot. Uh, a friend of mine, two years two years ago, uh, applied for Nigerian Bureau's grant. And it was at the final stage, she was on a Zoom call with the uh, with the company, Nigerian Bureaus. And during the call, they just asked him, okay, you know, he said, uh, he said, uh, I have a, a website, I have developer, I have this, I have that. He has claimed a lot. And it's not, it was actually not lying, but he, the technical people he had were not elite, were not, um, should I say, were not serious or were not qualified. In the sense that, so as it was on the Zoom call, they were actually trying to access the website he said he had. Unfortunately, his developer has not made the website go live. That was how he lost the grant because it was as though he was telling a lie. And he has actually paid the developer, but for some, only God knows why, they didn't make the website go live. And that was unfortunately the time they were checking. Probably we thought they were going to submit the website later after the interview. But you know, these things can. So please make sure you have whatever you need to have on ground. Whatever you don't have, say you don't have. There is really no need to lie on um, on, um, on what now? On an application because eventually they will find you out. All right. So that's that. Um, okay, budgeting. 
how much money are you bringing in? How much money are you anticipating to spend? The source of the money. If you have under other investors already, your current investors want to know, ah, we've already sold 20% of our shares. So now we are asking you to take 10% away also. So they will ask you for the negotiating terms of the previous 20%, you know, and the likes. Um, monitoring and evaluation plan. You need to know how to evaluate your business and your project. Okay. So they, they might ask for other documents, like I've said earlier, but you just have to prepare from time to time. You need to have elevator pitch, pictures of your business and the likes. So it's okay if you don't get it the first time. Everyone gets rejected. I get a lot of rejection emails. Oh, thank you for applying. Oh, thank you. Some, some of them will even write congratulations and you'll be happy. They, all of it, only for you to read congratulations. Thank you for applying. Your application was wonderful. However, my goodness. So things like that happen. Don't get discouraged. Try as much as possible. Even after this call, go on back online. Search for opportunities. All right. I showed us some websites. You can check them out for ongoing opportunities that you can take advantage of. All right. Maintain a good relationship with the grant body. Don't just collect money and run away. Uh, Chin, as I was asking about Niger Branchik, I was trying to say she's good with storytelling. You might learn a thing or two from her page, storytelling. Okay. So, um, you know, after getting money from funders, people run away and forget them. They can actually mentor you. The person that has the kind of money you're looking for has the kind of connection or the kind of wisdom you need to run your business successfully. So try and maintain relationship. More money can come from where this particular money, the first money you're getting is coming from. All right. And uh, I think that's it. That's, that's it. So thank you so much for your patience and for listening and, you know, for paying attention. Uh, now I would like to respond to questions if you have any. Okay, House of Gold, uh, okay, I've seen what you sent, so I would reach out to you. All right, thank you. So if you have a question, thank you so much for your patience. Uh, I have a question. Okay, please go on. Thank you so much for the class. It was insightful. But I applied for the Tony Lumelu Fund and grant this year. Okay. I actually applied twice before this year. So this my this was this is my third year. So oh. the the previous application I did, I never made it past the first stage. Okay. Um, maybe like because of the quality of my application. So this time around I did a lot of research and even had to um pay a grant writer to help okay. me because I did my own write-up, then gave it to him to proofread and tweak it to the requirements. But still, I didn't make it. So I'm asking, please, is there a way I can connect with you for you to look through my application, what I submitted, and tell me where the problem might be or in terms of my business as a whole? I, I'm, so, I'm suspecting, though, that it's because of my lack of online presence. I don't know. So I don't know where the problem is exactly. All right. Um, well, I'll be happy to, of course, um, view your application to see the challenge. Uh, the challenge with TEF is um, the, the competition has increased greatly. And secondly, because of the inflow of um, different investors, they've had, they now have a lot of investors. I think this year they selected 20,000 or so. Okay. Yeah, so there's so so their interest has to me their interest has been they changed a lot of things. Their focus, I mean, their focus, sorry, has really yeah. really changed. Yeah, you know, so a lot of things. But however, I will be glad to see and review your application again. So that next one, oh, okay, this is the tenth year. I hope they continue. Yeah, however, I don't, I don't think there will be a next one. That's the thing. So except. Yeah, yeah, let's like, look. I believe they should continue or have a new approach to it. I because it's a bro wonderful program for many. Oh, okay. So, so okay, I see a lot of yeah, I'm with you. Go on. 
can connect with you on on Instagram, right? Because I saw VG Afolabi. VG, uh, yes. I don't know if that's you. No, that's that's not me. I, I will just I will just uh, let me ask the organizers if I can drop my WhatsApp number. So anybody that wants to, I see a lot of requests here. So all right. Yeah. So okay. um, all right. Jennifer, Very much. Yeah. All right. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome. So you see, yeah, you're correct. Um, every year actually, they focus more on agrican tech. That's like the priority. Then every other thing can come in education. Yes, but agriculture. Tech. They also have like a woman bias thing now because of their investors. They also have like a catchment area, so they're trying to go around. So even your sometimes when your application is good, but because their slot for Nigeria has finished, so they will have to let you go, not because the application is bad. So the what they are considering has become so much that to me it's as though they are choked. So any other question before we round up the yes, class? Yes, um, one small question, please, from House okay. of Gold. Um, for somebody like me, I've been in this business for a long time, but I just started um, getting to do the, the right thing. Okay. But then I have not been keeping records. That's the bad aspect of the whole thing applying for, trying to apply for grants, that's the most difficult part for me. So, um, if I'm applying for a grant that will request for, that will ask, is your business up to two years, or they want business that is up to two years, and I've not been keeping records, how do I go about it if I just started keeping uh, records and on the book, on the paper, in a, using the exercise book, which you have faulted and I've learned my lessons now. How do mm -hmm. I generate that record? Okay, you start right now. Okay. Um, I don't know if you can you do you have some records on paper? Yes, I do. Okay, so you can explore but, but, not, the... but not um not everything. I write yeah. only when I remember or when when it occurs to me. It's so bad. Okay. So what you have to do now is you take advantage of any of the accounting website that just check them out online. The one that you feel you are fine with. There are some of them with free versions. You may, you may not necessarily need the paid one. So um, the ones you have on paper, input them into the system. Then from today, from this after this call, please don't skip putting down whatever you do. You, yes, you might have been making that mistake, but from now, don't stop making the mistake again. Don't make the mistake again, okay? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, don't make a mistake again. So don't worry about it's just um if you are sincere enough, even if you don't get a grant immediately now, if you can start now, uh, your business is like the one that runs often, like daily or weekly. No, it doesn't run. You know, is uh we are connected to school and it's Ooh, kind okay. of seasonal something. Okay, okay, good. Yes. So, so they request. Mostly the, the peak period is before September that they will take new people. Uh huh. So it's seasonal, it's not a daily stuff. But when we have work, we can we can be working daily, but the money is not coming in daily. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. So basically, from today, please make sure you keep records. The ones you have on paper, input them. If you have opportunity to submit submit what you have if they consider your sincerity fine because it, there are people that try to fabricate numbers but i tell you it always finds them out so there's no need to fabricate anything don't be in a hurry to get funding just keep doing the right thing now and after a while you will have gotten to that stage where you cannot present what you have for anybody that is asking you all right so just take it gradually and start doing the right thing okay all right, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so is there another question? Yes, sir. Good morning. I'm raising my yeah, hand well. My name is Bisala Otola, mental health specialist. Okay, welcome, ma'am. Thank you, sir. I uh, wanted to ask uh, concerning my line of business, which is more of a social enterprise. I already offer pro bono services 
to indigent Nigerians with depression and suicidal tendencies. And my, um, will I say, financial or projections usually comes in the improved quality of life of the client. Um, some of them are usually willing to write a testimonial to see how they've benefited. Would you be able to please guide me on what sort of grants work better? Because it's not really the money they need to invest. If um, one is able to get, will I say, the capacity building for what I need to be able to expand the service, to make it available to people in real time. So I just wanted to ask the suggestion because most of the class today seems to be about um, profit-making businesses. Okay. All right. Okay. So um, there are actually you're more on the advantage part in the sense that um, um, you, your line of business has a lot of um, well, it's a lot of grants. Now, even if you get grants, even though what you say now is you know, don't need money, if you get the grants, there are a lot of NGO grants. You can pay bodies that have you know, the skills. You understand? You can pay them to offer those trainings. Or are you saying you need to be trained on some things? Um, so far, I've done most of my... I've basically done all my certifications. So I'm a trained trauma specialist. So I can, though, of course, I need additional manpower as um, the um, number of clients would grow. What I plan to offer is a real-time phone access so people can just call in in case they are going through depression or a mental health challenge and they can call and we can attend to them and at least offer some mental first aid that would help to, you know, take over that person that is just standing, maybe thinking of going to third main land bridge, can call and talk to yeah. us first. So we're able to offer something to them that would help to, you know, decrease the chance of them going there. And then we work on um, referring them, either coming to us for a specialist, or if they are not within our reach, they can go. We have um, the we like say, resource person's um, database, and then they can go. Because I'm already connected with my professional body so in Nigeria, so I can always refer them to whatever mental health specialist is closest to them. Okay, so just to be very specific, what do you need now? need now well is the capacity the uh, location um phone access desktop and laptop um yes yeah, a system where you know people can call a toll free line is actually my dream to so have like a toll free line people can call so irrespective of their financial state they can access the mental health service okay great so what you need now do you, you sound more like me that you need funding to do these things you need money to yes. do this yes so applying for NGO grants it's is your best guess. And also okay. partnerships. Partnerships. Yes. 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 Partnerships. Let me yes. add this question. I was looking at um, is it how can one write maybe like a grant or a proposal to maybe a telecom? Because what I really want of is like a toll free. So is there a way one can work with a telecom, one of them, and they'll be willing okay. to offer that, that in line, you know, people don't pay to make the call because this is a mental okay. health service. Know the challenge with depression and suicide right now in Nigeria. Okay, excellent. So um, there's this thing uh, called company social responsibility. I think CSR. Yeah. Yeah. So every company has that. So you need to research which of the communication companies has a social responsibility that may touch what you do. That's the one you should write to. All right. Yeah, you need to research. That's part of the research you have to do all of them have a social responsibility that they are really, really committed and they are willing to partner with responsible bodies for. You just need to find out which one has like your own uh, interest at heart. Then you write to them constantly. Um, writing to them may work, it may not work. So you may not take a step further to find this way your network would help you. Since you belong to like an organization, so there might be the leaders in the organization might be able to help link you up with the persons that's, you know, that is probably in the charge of the CSR or someone that can connect. You just need that connect. So aside the money to set up because uh, they may or may not want to fund the whole, aside giving you a free line thing, um, you know, you need like people to at the other end to respond, especially people that are trained in computers, yeah. phones, locations and the like. So, it would be fantastic if you can sort that part out 
and you're just coming to them for just that free line. All, All right. right. Okay. Some of them might be benevolent to give you a hold, but I'm not sure about that. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. All right. Um, okay, so um, please. Sir, I, I would like to say something, please. Pardon me okay. for the interruption. Um, right. For the lady who just talked about mental health, um, I have a suggestion. Um, and this is because I have a relative, my brother, he's also a mental health coach. And um, he has his, um, um, he's a clinical psychologist. So um, how about, first of all, how do people get to know you, get to know your services, the services you render? Um, you, with this age of AI, you could also have a chat box on WhatsApp that after you've done your, um, your homework, your homework in the sense of social media, you could have an app. It's because it also works best if you have an app or a website or a social media presence where people can actually get to know what you do, your brand. For example, you're on Instagram, you have a Facebook, official Facebook page, and people reach out to you. There's a chat box that can actually respond to these people. You know, it's just like you're chatting with them one-on-one. -on -one. Before you get to the full line apart, um, they, they, they reach out to you on Facebook. Can and Sorry? Excuse me. The reason why mental health, I want to answer what you're saying. Why for mental health, I can't really use Facebook and Instagram to respond to people is because their privacy and confidentiality has to be protected. So if I'm working even with the phone line, I need to get a software that ensures that I am protecting the calls that are coming in. If I work with WhatsApp, I know WhatsApp calls are totally encrypted. For Facebook and Instagram, I run a risk of breaking their privacy. I'm using that as an example. WhatsApp has a chat box. That I'm just using that as an example to make you understand what I'm trying to say. Um, it is automated. You do not have to be there to answer the calls directly. But this, this application, help to get the data of whosoever and what they need, then you cannot respond to them personally. It can be done on all platforms, WhatsApp, um, um, Facebook, um, depending on the one you prefer, your, your preference. I'm, um, I may not be making as much sense as you think, but just try to skip out what I'm trying to say. That is before you get to... Um, I just wanted you to get me to that the chat box because if they drop their personal information that they're having a mental health crisis their data needs to be protected that they are sending this is a medical line i'm a fully licensed medical practitioner i cannot allow my client's information patient's information to be out there like that that's what i'm saying i understand what you're saying and i've looked at all these options but i know it's just like the way we don't advertise you can't advertise their services you can only say what you offer. It's the same way that Instagram, Facebook carry that risk. I have a bit of protection with WhatsApp because it's directly to the number and there's encryption with WhatsApp. So that's what I'm also trying to say that I want you to get because they will have to drop their name, something personal to them. And if anybody can access that, they can use it against them. Because privacy and confidentiality is the first thing in healthcare. You must protect it at all costs for your clients. Okay, so... Uh... I believe this discussion can go on later. Thank you. Sorry for interrupting that. So um, I'm sure you guys can still have discussions later. And it's, it's part of networking and collaboration. Can it is oh, that's so All right. Uh, just. Uh, I'm second, uh, sir. About okay. the test, when you said, when I said it was five years, I just had to go through the Excel now. It's 10 years, not five years projection. I stand to be corrected on that. Okay, yeah, 10 years, right? I, I think I saw, yeah. I know it's usually 10 years projection plan, and that's good. So once you, um, you got the program, right? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Okay, good. So um, the lady that wanted to, that said she, uh, she applied and didn't get it. You can also you can send it to me. I will help you review. She can also review. She's 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 also like an alumnus too. So I believe with plenty of ideas, you have the best results. All right, sir. 
Okay. So, in absence of any other um, question, I don't know uh, if the admin is still there. Okay, admin, I hear that. So if uh, I hear that. Yes, I'm here. Sorry, I was okay, trying to so uh, we just ran out of the class now and the questions has been 